Thank you for joining me in our first virtual lecture on Communication Studies 102 Public Discourse. Uh, my name is Jose Quintero. I'm going to be your instructor for this class. Uh, you can call me Jose or Professor Quintero, whatever you are most comfortable with. Um, I'm here in my home, like most of you. Let me show you my setup here. This is my apartment. This is where I'm going to be reading everything that I'm going to be telling you in this class. Okay, today I want to talk about three things. First, I want to introduce the course to you. Um, you should have already read the syllabus and the workflow document I sent you, but I want to talk more candidly about what I expect from each assignment and how I feel the class should go and should be going. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you about my approach to public speaking. I teach public speaking as communication, uh, which means something very specific. I'm going to let you know about it in a little bit. And then finally, I want to talk to you about uh, public speaking anxiety. Um, how are we going to combat fear of public speaking in this class? Uh, but first, a little bit more about me. Um, like I said, my name is Jose Luis Quintero Ramirez. I am a Guatemalan, lived there my entire life, and then came to the US uh, for school. Um, and then I've not stopped school ever, and now I'm a PhD student. I'm a fourth year PhD student in rhetoric and public culture, and my focus is on network affect. I'm interested in how we talk about how it feels to be networked. So, you know, teaching online, actually cool opportunity for me. We can talk about that later. Um, this is my sixth semester, quarter, teaching public discourse. It's a class I like a lot, and it was one of my favorite classes um, when I was an undergrad. So hopefully this is something you will like and you will remember for some time after the class is over. But before we talk about the class being over, let's talk a little bit about how the class is starting. So, you should have already read the syllabus and the workflow, which means you know that each week you will be reading some documents, you're going to be watching a couple of videos, and you're going to be writing responses for both of those. Um, the readings, some of them uh, might feel basic, uh, but that's because we all have a sense of what public speaking is, regardless of your skill level. It's something we do regularly, whether it is we're talking in a public space or it's an assignment in class, or we see our professors do it every day when they lecture. Uh, we see it online and offline, whether it is something we look for or something we happen upon when scrolling on Facebook. Uh, this is one of the reasons public speaking is hard to teach. It's because we all come uh, from different places in our public speaking understanding. We all know bits and pieces about it without knowing the whole picture. When you're used to something, it's hard to see all of its moving pieces. Uh, the readings in this class are meant to fight against that. Uh, they're meant to give us a shared vocabulary which with to work so that we can all talk the same language when we're talking about public speaking. Uh, please read them. Even if they're basic, they should go by quickly. And let me know in the comments uh, of the discussion section uh, what you thought about the readings, what you think it was easy, what was hard, what was new, what was something you didn't expect, anything that comes to mind um, you'll be able to write about alongside some of the guiding questions that I'm going to add. Every week we're also going to be watching two videos, at least two videos. Uh, these are all examples of public, spe public speaking, and they're all good and bad for different reasons. You are the audience for these videos, so if you didn't like it, there's probably a reason for it. If you loved it, there's a reason for it too. We will use these videos to try and figure out what it is that makes them connect with us and what it is that doesn't, what we can imitate and what it is that we would like to avoid. These videos are all going to be about all sorts of topics, um, but they're always also going to be about public speaking. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later today. Finally, after you do those, those two things and you listen to this video lecture, you're going to have to give a speech to yourself, record it and upload it once a week. Uh, this video should be two to two and a half minutes long, um, and you need to fill that time. We will use the speeches to try out different things we learn in every class, so I won't really be grading them for the success or for the quality of your recording, rather for how much I see you trying new things and challenging yourself. Now, I want to repeat this. You need to talk for at least two minutes. No video should be less than that. I want you to get a sense of how much time that is, how long it takes to fill out two minutes with content, uh, so that you can recognize this in bigger speeches. 
two minutes will become your unit of analysis for speech making. Uh, for tomorrow, your speech topic is going to be yourself. I want you to introduce yourself to the class in whatever way you want. Just make sure you let us know what your name, your year, and your major is. The rest of the two minutes, uh, it's up to you. Where are you? What are you recording? How are you dealing with this situation? You don't have to talk about it at all if you don't want to. I just want to make sure that you talk to a camera for two minutes and then upload it to the class. Okay, those are the three main weekly exercises. Uh, you will also be uh, reviewing your peers' speeches. You won't have to watch everyone's video, don't worry about that. Uh, at some point tomorrow, I'm going to email you a list of groups, and everyone's going to be put in a group of four, and every week you're responsible for watching the videos in your group and writing uh, what they did well, what they can improve on um, as a comment in their discussion post. Um, I'm going to be uploading a discussion section uh, about it with instructions. So look up for that. I will send you an email when that's done. Okay, that's on the regular week. During three weeks of this quarter, we're going to be doing our big speeches. There are three major speeches in the class, uh, which will make up the majority of your grade. The first is an informative speech. The second is a storytelling speech. And the last is a persuasive speech. The week these speeches are due, there will be no other assignments. You can focus on writing, preparing, and recording these speeches. Uh, make sure to check the syllabus for more uh, detailed information on each of them, and we will cover them when the weeks in which they are due are here. But in the meantime, if you have questions about those, uh, just make sure to send me an email or look at your syllabus. Um, for now, however, you might want to start thinking about what the topic is that you would like to choose. Um, in this class, you want to choose one topic to focus on, and that's going to be the subject of your three major speeches. So make sure it's a good one, and make sure it's one that you are interested in. Uh, check the syllabus. There's a list of topics that are not acceptable in this class. Uh, but if you have a particular idea and you are not sure whether that fits into one of those categories, send me an email. Let's talk about it. Finally, I want to talk to you a little bit about grades. Uh, as you know, all classes are now pass or fail. I'm still going to grade you with points. Uh, that's because I feel like it gives a better feedback on how you're doing in the class, how you can improve on your speeches and your daily exercises. Um, you know, as long as you make a passing grade, you're going to pass. So in the end, it's not going to matter a lot. But uh, for better transparency and so that we can communicate better about how you're developing in the class, um, I'm going to stick to a point structure. And that's it. Those are the basics of the class. If you have any other questions about things in the syllabus, uh, make sure to email me. And I want to stress this uh, a lot. I want to make sure that even though we're not meeting in class, you know you can reach out to me and we can talk about how the class is going, what you're liking, what you're not liking, um, so that we can change things. If you're finding difficulty uploading videos, if you find that your time zone is too off with this one and so you need a stricter or better timeline for doing the work, let me know and we can work on it. Um, a couple weeks into the quarter after your first speech, I am going to email you a review form so that you can let me know what exercises you're liking, what exercises you're not liking, and we can uh, change the class around so it's better suited for your learning. Okay, that's it for logistics this time around. Now I want to talk to you about our two main topics today. First is my approach to teaching public speaking, and second is how we're going to get over our fear of public speaking. Okay, this class focuses on public speaking, but it really is about communication in general. The principles you will learn in this class to become a better public speaker, I'm hoping you will also learn to adapt to other forms of communication. Uh, this is why the first example of public speaking I like to show in the class is the video on Arrival. Like a lot of you identified, the video on Arrival has its pros and its cons. It's beautifully made, it's eloquent, it's a little confusing in its structure, at least the first time you watch it. Um, but I love it, and I love it for a couple of reasons. The first is because the narrator is clearly speaking about something he loves. You can tell he's interested in the subject. Um, and that excitement is contagious. It communicates itself very well, whether it's in video essays or in speeches. This is a lesson you should keep in mind. But the main reason why I love it is it's because it's coherent. It's a tight. 
Uh, it is a video essay about how movies can best communicate that uses a movie about the importance of communication as its object. It itself is an exercise in communication. The narrator thinks Arrival is different than other movies because every single part of it, its plot, its editing, its metaphors, its chronology, are being used to communicate the same thing, the movie's thesis. This is in comparison, he says, to other movies this day and age that are messy, that don't always point in the same direction. Now, public speaking is an uphill battle. Whether you're talking in front of a class or an auditorium, or you're uploading a vlog or a video essay, you have to constantly convince an audience to give you their attention. There's always something else to think about, always something else to click on. You have to use all of the tools at your disposal. In our case, not editing, but speech, movement, language choices, tone, pitch, pauses, gestures, emotion, to win an audience over. Everything you don't use, and this is important, is a distraction. So it's not just that you're wasting an opportunity to make a better speech or a better movie, it is that your speech is actively more distracting when you don't use all of the means available to you in whatever medium you're working. Speech, video, written word, this is true for everything. So in this class, what I'm trying to do is develop a grammar for all of the elements of public speaking. All of those things that we can influence, that we can use to teach an audience for two reasons. The first is because they help us communicate our idea best. They help us make our point in the clearest way possible, but also because they help us keep the audience's attention. They help us eliminate any distraction that we might be giving the audience. Once we can communicate clearly and gather attention, then we know we're working with craft, with artistry. We're indulging in this medium, public speaking. By learning how to do it here, you are also learning it how to do in other mediums, in other genres. So uh, during this quarter, you're gonna hear me come back all the time to the context in which we're speaking. Where are you talking? Who's your audience? What are you talking about? All of these things dictate the way in which you should be using all of the elements at your disposal. But in order to do that, we first have to overcome uh, the first and often the biggest barrier to communication, to public speaking, and that is fear. Now we all suffer from this kind of anxiety in different ways. Our hands get sweaty, our knees tremble, we black out and we just don't remember if we actually said something or we did it. Now, because anxiety is so varied and so personal, we won't really delve into its specific symptoms. We're all dealing, it with, it, with dealing with it differently and therefore we all need different solutions to it. The truth is there's actually little we can do, uh, especially in this short 10 week class to get rid of public speaking anxiety. However, we can manage it, lessen it. We can learn what to expect from it, and in that way, actually use our anxiety in our advantage. Now, the more you practice the speech, the more you know what you're doing, the simpler the anxiety becomes. This is important because what we recognize as fear of public speaking is oftentimes a lot of different anxieties brought together. You might be given a big presentation at your job or in class, and you might be worried about how well you load the material, about whether your communication is clear, about what you're gonna think about you, about how you dressed, about how much you slept the night before. All these things together produce something that's hard to deal with because we don't quite understand it. We just know that our hands are sweaty, that our stomach hurts. In this class, we're gonna try and untangle this knot of anxiety. We're gonna try and figure out what exactly makes us anxious and how we can deal with different parts of that anxiety, that anxiety so that it is easier to manage. By giving a speech every week, we're learning how our body reacts to this kind of anxiety. And in turn, learning how we need to prepare to manage that anxiety. This is personal and is therefore on you. For my part, 
as we move through the class, I'm going to try and give you ways of practicing, of preparing, of learning your speeches and presenting them the best you can so that that anxiety can be reduced. We'll start that next week. This week, I don't want you to worry about that at all. Just focus on getting your speech recorded, send it over, we'll go from there. Now in this particular online class, uh, you will also find a different kind of anxiety. Whenever you need to make a public something, uh, something you've made, whether it is a piece of writing, uh, a picture you took, a song you wrote, a video you recorded, you also need to get over a fear of being judged by it. As we post videos every week, my hope is that we can reflect and talk about how that feels and learn also how to manage that anxiety. This is something that's close to me. I'm a musician when I'm not teaching class and having to play in public and upload music you wrote to the internet generates a lot of anxiety, anxiety that is very particular. And one of the best ways to deal with that is getting more and more stuff out there. The best way to get over those fears is to practice them in a controlled space, space, a class like this one. Now, I love using Emma Watson's video as an example of anxiety because she doesn't hide the anxiety. She speaks about it and uses it in her speech to make her claims more worthwhile. The fact that she's scared and still decides to speak about her cause lets us know that it is a cause worthwhile. If not me, who? If not now, when? My hope is that by taking this class, you will be ready to talk when it is up to you to do so. Uh, that's it for today. Um, yeah, I guess it's just, as you can tell, I'm doing this in one take. Uh, if I mumble my words or if something is not clear, please send me an email. One of the reasons I'm uploading this to YouTube is because YouTube has an algorithm that uh, gives uh, cla captions to all of the videos which might make them easier to consume or to read if you happen to be in a busy household. Um, again, the last thing I wanna say is make sure to email me if there's anything that is not clear about this class, anything that you want explained, or if you wanna have a meeting with me. I'm not gonna have uh, an office hour uh, set time. Instead, you'll send me an email, let me know that you wanna meet and we'll figure out what time best works for both of us. I hope everyone's doing well and is healthy, I'm excited to get to know all of you on your speeches tomorrow. Have a good one.